This lesson is on subtracting a mixed number from a whole number. And uh, at first, it, it looks like a relatively simple problem, but it's a little more difficult than the average subtraction problem. And, and first, we need to define terms. What's a whole number? A whole number is anything like uh, mm, 1 is a whole number, 10 is a whole number, 226 is a whole number. Any numbers without fractions or decimals, those are whole numbers. Okay, just whole numbers. Now, what's a mixed number? A mixed number is a whole number with a fraction. Those are mixed numbers. Because they have a whole number and a fraction, they're mixed. So I'm going to show you subtraction of a whole number I mean, or actually, a, 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 a whole number, and we're going to subtract a mixed number from it. And, and you'll see, I think, when I put the problem up there, what the difficulty might be with this particular kind of problem. Oh, let's make it, oh, three-fourths. So I have 12, my whole number, and I'm subtracting my mixed number, three and three-fourths, from 12. Let me tell you what most people do with this problem, and the reason it's a little bit difficult. What most people do is they look at it and they say, well, there's nothing up here. I've got 3 fourths, so they bring the 3 fourths down. They go 12 minus 3 is 9. And that looks reasonable, doesn't it? 12 minus 3 and 3 fourths is 9 and 3 fourths. It looks reasonable. Here's my problem. In a subtraction problem, when you subtract, whatever your answer is, you should be able to add that to the bottom number of the subtraction problem and get the top number. Uh, you, you know, like, uh, let's say we had, uh, oh, 9 minus 3 equals 6. See, so we can add the 6 and the 3 and we get 9 back at the top. That's the way it should work. But that doesn't seem to work out for this problem. Because if I have 12, and three, 12 minus 3 and 3 fourths, and I subtract, I get 9 and 3 fourths. Just adding the 9 and the 3 alone gives me the 12. I still have 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. So this can't be the right answer. So what do I do? I recognize that as in any problem, if my number on the bottom is larger than what I'm subtracting from, I have to do what? Borrow. So watch, I'm going to borrow. I'm going to say from this, tw from this 2 right here, I'm going to go like this, I'm going to put a 1. And I'm going to bring 1 over. Here's my problem. Do you remember when we talk about adding and subtracting fractions? We must have the same what? Denominator. So I can't bring a 1 over here. And, and put it right there. I borrowed a 1, but in order for me to use that 1, I have to put it in terms of my, of my denominator, my, my other denominator. I have, to, I have to make this 1 in terms of this denominator. Well, there's a, 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 a principle here. Any number over itself is equal to 1. Um, uh, for instance, 8 over 8 is equal to 1. Uh, 16 over 16 is equal to 1. 3 over 3 is equal to 1. Well, if that's the case, 4 over 4 is equal to 1. So the 1 that I just took from here, which does me no good as a 1 over here, I can convert that into 4 over 4. You remember, any number over itself is equal to one, the one I just borrowed from that two. I turned it into or converted it to four over four. Now what do I have? I have two fractions with the same denominator, which I need if I'm going to subtract fractions, and now I simply subtract one numerator from the other. Four minus three, one fourth. And eleven minus three is eight. And that is the answer to our problem. Notice that if I add back up, 4, excuse me, 8 plus 3 is 11, and 1 fourth plus 3 fourths equals 4 fourths, which is equal to 1, and 11 plus 1 equals my original 12. So that truly is the answer, and we've shown it by adding, adding it back up. Okay? I hope that helps. I'll give you some more problems like this down the road.